are listening to America's first 24-hour radio broadcast, KGFJ Los Angeles, playing all the swell tunes of today and yesterday. And now, here's When You've Gone. Now won't you listen, dearie, while I say, how could you tell me that you're gone away? Don't say that we must part. That's places, please. Places, babe. Thank you. Break a leg. Thank you. It's a packed house. Have a good show. by the Chevrolet Series BA Confederate. A ride infused with comfort and pizzazz. Drive 1932's hottest automobile today. And now, can you believe it, guys and gals? We're only two months away from the most extravagant spectacle in town. Nominations are out for the fifth annual Oscar celebration right here in Movieland at the beautiful Ambassador Hotel. Stick with us, folks. We've got the inside scoop right here on KGFJ Los Angeles. And now, in this time of economic hardship, here's an old favorite from Warfield and Williams, Baby, won't you please come home? I've had the blues, I feel so long. Father, how come we can see more stars when we visit Uncle Charles? It's darker in the countryside. No light shining in your face, like in London. So, out here you can see all the stars and the Milky Way. They're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. Is that Aquarius? There. See his jaw and his arm? Not the brightest in the sky, but every summer at this time, Aquarius pours water from his jaw. See? <laughs> Father, I want to be a star, just like you. Like me? 
well. I'm not famous by any means. But maybe someday. But people love you. They laugh, they cry, and cheer and clap for you and Uncle. Well, <laughs> I want to be a famous actress so I can stand on the stage in front of a crowd with all the lights with you and with you and they'll <laughs> cheer and love us and we'll love them back and bow <laughs> <laughs> and cook <cancel. laughs> so it's a theater for you too Hmm. Well, you can be anything you dream, my darling. But you've got to have a lot of crust in show business. I'll tell you a secret of how to be great. When you're on that stage, it's not about your experience. It's about theirs. If you really want people to love you, you have to give them an experience they could never forget. You have to work hard, never give up. And no matter what, remember you'll always have a father who loves you. A, a gift for my daughter, the future star. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Is this Aquarius? It is. That's your sign. Here you go. There. I love it. Past ten. Look, your favorite gardenias. They need light, and so do you. Come on, Peg. You have to get up. Leave me alone. Do you hear back from the playhouse? No one wants me, Charlie. Stays on What's eating you? Everyone's down on their luck. Then how can those blind, fat blowhards from RKO just drop my option? How can they have cut so much from the best performance of my life from 13 women and not even invite me to the premiere? It's so insulting. The papers. Listen to this. The mad hopes. In the cast, Peg Antwistle and Humphrey Bogart hold first place in supporting the star and both give fine, serious performances. Miss Antwistle as the earnest young daughter of a vague mother and presents a charming picture of youth. And I was playing the Big Apple. My name in a thousand watt masters. I'm supposed to be on stage. They loved me. 
I'm good. Indeed you are. This is interesting. We regrettably must inform you that your employment contract will not be renewed for another term. David O'Sullivan. I'm a fool. <laughs> I'm no good. It's the curse, Charlie. It followed me from New York. You're just in a dry spell like the rest of us. And it's not you. It's them. That damned Hayes office can't handle a murderous woman who loves another woman on film. As to Mr. Selznick and RKO, that's politics. They feel the world's not ready for a true artist like you. So, are you going to sit here and let them take the bread and butter out of your mouth, hon? You think your old man would have given in and taken their gaff? You know, you have to read for a hundred rolls before you get another break. So, how many have you been on? One hundred and one. I'm going back to New York. Not even enough for a cap. You think it's any better back east? You hear this? People are jumping from bridges. And in its Harlem district, unemployment has reached nearly 50%. However, Democrat Peg, Governor Roosevelt remains... You're smart. It all around, with the and even for your age, people, you have more life experience than most. Experience in the theater. That's what I know. You expect me to work in something else? You could teach then. Have a little something come in between your acting jobs? I have a responsibility to my audience. People still go to the theater, Charlie, especially now when they need an escape. And I'm not there to perform for them. I'm sorry, Peg. But you're not the only one in a pinch here. You'll have to think of something to do to help out around here. I'd rather die than become some... A blanny. Then get up and fight! You're going to sit around all day and sulk? Your father was a fighter. So you're not at the premiere, so what? You still have a good scene. It all may turn around after it's released. Now you stand up. You stand up for your work like you're on top of the world. You go out tonight and celebrate. And you think about all you've accomplished. What was it you promised your old man? Never give up. Do something they'll never forget. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Charlie. All right, boys, you're listening to KGFJ Los Angeles. And like we promised, we've got the inside scoop on the Oscar nods. Rather light this year is RKO Pictures, surprisingly, after last year's unbelievable seven nominations and three wins for their gritty western Cimarron, starring Oscar nominees Richard Dix and Irene Dunn. Not surprisingly, however, RKO's stars of the silver screen are not among this year's nominees after their anticipated flop, 13 Women, starring Miss Dunn, rumored to have scores of scenes left on the cutting room floor. Can they turn it around? After all, tonight's the big premiere in New York for 13 Women, 
Representatives at RKO and producer David O. Selznick boast about a shortened, fresh cut of this starlet packed thriller. But the only mystery here is whether or not RKO will cash in on this lady ensemble. Well, Mr. Selznick, we wish you well, but we won't expect any miracles. agreement between yourself and RKO Radio Pictures, and regarding the contract of employment with RKO, we regrettably must inform you that your employment contract will not be renewed for another term. You are hereby released from said contract and free to seek employment with another studio company. We wish you all the best of success in your career. With best wishes, we are yours very truly, RKO Pictures, David Osa. Very sorry, we have to let you go. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we mourn the loss of a legend. Your mother's left us. Ralph, we need her back. We need Mr. Peg. Selznick, Not you're too late, wrong. Mr. Selznick. I'm good. Give me hope to kill. Give them something they'll never forget. We'll sign her as a lead. She'll fill out a roster alongside Heppard. I deserve to have them sleep in something they'll never forget. She'll take an archaeo to the top. This is my moment. I can see all the stars in the sky. I miss you, Father. A true movie land tragedy. Peg Entwistle, known for her spectacular Broadway performances and a promising movie career, is gone. Peg. Something that no one will ever forget. I'll always be with you.
Los Angeles Police Department. How may I help you? Yes. I, I was hiking near the Hollywood Land sign today, and near the bottom I found a woman's shoe and jacket. A little further I, I noticed a purse. Inside of it was a suicide note. I looked down the mountain and I... I saw a body. I don't want any publicity in this matter. So I wrapped up the jacket, shoes, and purse in a bundle and I laid them on the steps of the Hollywood police station. Just a second. Are you ready? We're sorry that you had to find out in the paper like this, but we were hoping that someone would recognize the initials. I am afraid I am a coward. I am afraid I am a coward. I am sorry for everything. If I had done this a long time ago, it would have saved a lot of pain. Peg. Hello. Telegram from Millicent and Whistle. Uh, that's for Peg. I, I can take that. Uh, I'm Charles and Whistle. Congratulations. We would like to offer you the part. She'd be tickled pink. Thank you. Love good news. Have a good day, sir. and how you've captivated this tough town. You've performed in hundreds of plays now and bring so much to your comedic characters. 
Are you drawn towards comedy, or do you have interest in exploring more dramatic roles? Well, honestly, I would rather play roles that carry conviction. Maybe it is because they are the easiest, and yet the hardest things for me to do. To play any kind of emotional scene, I must work up to a certain pitch. If I reach this in my first word, then the rest of the words and lines take care of themselves. I've come to an irrevocable decision. Die is cast. I'm going on the stage. But if I fail, <laughs> I have to build up the balance of the speeches. You're so beautiful. And in doing this, the whole characterization falls Just flat. See those glorious eyes again. That I feel that I am cheating myself. Wonderful, ineffably tender smile. Those gentle features with your gentle beauty. My darling. I don't know whether other actresses get the same reaction or not, but when I think about this fear of letting down my audience, fear of failure, I remember a quote from one of my favorite performances. I know now I know that, that in, in our, our work, work whether, whether it's, it's acting, acting or, writing, or writing, it's not about the fame nor about the glory that I had dreamt, but about the strength to endure, to bear one's cross and have faith. I have faith, and I'm not scared anymore. And when I think about my calling, I'm not afraid of life. This is my color, and there's nothing else in the world to which I would rather devote my life. Well, Miss Antwisson, congratulations on your early success on stage. And now we hear you're making your way to the silver screen. So is it goodbye stage, hello movie town? Well, like my father, I will never lose my love of the stage. After he passed, I swore a promise to myself. For those who love a great performance, who love a great story, for those who love me, I owe it to my audience to leave behind a lasting impression. For I love you too. After you've gone, and left me crying after you've gone there's no denying you feel blue you feel sad you miss the dearest pal you ever had there'll come a time When you'll regret it